Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation with i, the imaginary unit. i could be defined as follows, but let me not say it right now because that's going to give away some of the things we're going to do here. So let me hold on to that. But basically, we are dealing with complex numbers here. Now, I would call this a nice exponential because of the results. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the solution together, and then I'll show you the result from Wolfram Alpha, and we'll kind of talk about why and how this works. Okay, so we have a number, i, whose x power is equal to negative 1. Now, we've done similar problems before. You can go ahead and check them out here. We have uh, this, uh, you know, in different versions, like i to the power x can be 2, 1, or something else. Anyways, this is uh, probably among those, this is going to be one of the easiest ones and maybe even the most interesting one. Anyways, you'll decide. So to solve this problem, I'm going to be writing both sides as um, complex numbers in polar form. So I'm going to be using Euler's formula, and Euler's formula is really, really nice. I mean, Euler is one of the greatest mathematicians, maybe he's the greatest in my opinion, but anyways, uh, that's just uh, my opinion. Um, he gave us a lot of great things, but one of them is basically if you have anything like e to the power i alpha, where alpha is an angle, we can basically write this as cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. So that's kind of interesting because when you have a complex number in trigonometric form, such as 1 plus i, you know, you, this can be written as square root of 2 times cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. You can definitely write it in a more compact form as root 2 multiplied by e to the power i times pi over 4. This is really nice because it's much more compact. You avoid writing all the cosine and sine, and this basically summarizes the whole thing. And a lot of times this is nice because when you're multiplying two complex numbers in polar form, all you have to do is add the exponents, which are going to end up being uh, the addition of the arguments or the angles. Make sense? Okay, great. So this is really nice. Uh, that's what we're going to use on both sides. But since uh, x is going to take care of all values of i, we don't have to worry about uh, writing it in general form, but we're going to just go with the principal branch on that one. I, I know a lot of people had questions about these, like, aren't you supposed to do that? We can also look at it, use diff two different integers right, uh, to write it in polar form in more general form, and then see if that works at all. Okay, so we're going to explore that as well. Let me start by writing i as uh, a complex number in polar form. So i can be written as 0 plus 1i, so it basically appears as 0 comma 1 on the coordinate system, and this is going to be the imaginary axis, and this is going to be my real axis. So its angle is going to be pi over 4. So you can basically write the i as and its length is 1, its modulus or radius. So i can be written as 1 times e to the power i times pi over 2. And of course, you're always allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it, like instead of writing it this way, you can also write it like pi over 2 plus 2 and pi. Okay? But we're going to avoid that because that is going to be our base, and there's a variable exponent which is actually going to run through all these values. But like I said earlier, I'm going to show you both versions and see if both of them are valid. Okay? So, let's start by writing i that way. And what about the right-hand side? We do have a negative 1. Let's go ahead and write the negative 1 as follows. So, negative 1 can basically be graphed like this. Negative 1 is going to be here. And then its angle is going to be pi. And of course, its radius or modulus is again 1. Its distance from... Uh, zero. So negative one can be written as e to the power i times pi, but you got to add multiples of two pi to it, two n pi, because we have to write it in the general form. But guess what? This can also be written as e to the power i times two n plus one pi. In other words, we're looking at odd multiples of pi, and that'll give you negative one. Make sense? Let's go down, plug it in, and see what happens. We have i to the power x equals negative 1. Replace i with e to the power i pi over 2 and raise it to the power x. And then the negative 1 will be replaced with e to the power i 
times 2n plus 1 pi. Awesome. If you multiply the exponents, you're going to get e to the power i times pi over 2 times x, and then e to the power i times 2n plus 1 times pi. Notice that uh, we can get rid of the i and the pi, right? Obviously. And that's going to leave us half of x here. e to the power x over 2 equals e to the power 2n plus 1. Notice that we didn't really have to, have to ln both sides. And even if you did, you, get, you would get the exact same answer. But from here, since the exponents, I mean, the numbers are the same and the bases are the same, this basically means that the exponents are also going to be the same. Make sense? Great. So let's go ahead and write it as follows. x over 2 equals 2n plus 1. So we got x over 2 equals 2n plus 1 from here. If you multiply both sides by 2, we're going to get x equals 4n plus 2. And let me not forget that n is an integer. All right? So what's that supposed to mean? Well, if n is 0, x is 2. If n is 1, n is 6, so on and so forth. So we're basically talking about numbers that are 2 mod 4. In other words, if you divide that integer by 4, the remainder will always be 2. So even numbers that are not multiples of 4, in other words. Make sense? Okay, so x is going to be that. And why does that work? Let's go ahead and briefly talk about it. And we'll explore the 2 integer case if that's going to work for us. So take a look at this. If x is, if n is 0, x is 2, and that's definitely going to work because i squared is negative 1. You should know that. That's the definition that I didn't want to tell you at the beginning because that would spoil the surprise in case you didn't know this. But i is the number whose square is negative 1. In other words, i is one of the square roots of negative 1. A lot of times people say it is the square root of negative 1, but that's not true. Negative 1 has two square roots, i and negative i because when you square both you when you square either number you get negative one make sense okay cool now let's go ahead and take a look since the def by definition i squared is negative one and we have an equation i to the x equals negative one we can basically go ahead and do the following replace x with two but here's the thing i to the power four is one and if you raise both sides to the power n where n is an integer the result is not going to change so in other words i to the power four n is always one Therefore, I can go ahead and multiply i to the x by i to the power 4n, and that's going to give me basically the same thing. Or I can do it as follows. Write the i to the x, and then write the negative 1 as i squared, and multiply it by i to the power 4n, because this is 1. This is still going to be true, and then it's going to give us i to the power 4n plus 2. Therefore, this is going to be the right answer. Make sense? Okay, now what happens if we use two integers? Let's go ahead and explore that a little bit and see what happens. I know some people think that, hey, we have to use two integers, otherwise it's going to be incorrect. Let's go ahead and take a look. What happens if I write the i as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2k pi and the negative 1 as e to the power 2n plus 1 times, and I can put the i first, times pi. Make sense? Obviously, the pi and the i are still going to cancel out. So we can go ahead and get rid of the i. Let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit and forget about the bases. Uh, we can just write it as pi times 2k plus 1 half. And that equals pi times 2n plus 1. Awesome. Oh, I forgot the x. There should be an x somewhere, right? Obviously, we're solving for x, so we can't just make it disappear. Okay, cool. Now, this is going to give us the following. After getting rid of the pi's and dividing both sides by this, we're going to get the answer. But let's go ahead and make a common denominator here. 4k plus 1 divided by 2 times x equals 2n plus 1. And if you go ahead and multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this number, x is going to become 4n plus 2 divided by 4k plus 1. So it looks like we got an answer that is more complicated, not complex. And let's see if this is going to work. Well, if you replace n with 0 and k with 1, you're going to get x equals 2 over 5. Do you think this is going to work? i to the power 2 over 5 is equal to negative 1. Is that correct? Well, think about it. i to the power 1 over 5 
is going to be squared. And now i to the power one fifth, like we're talking about the fifth roots of i, and whatever that number is when you square, is that going to be negative one? Or you can look at it this way too, uh, i to the power two to the power one fifth. This is going to be negative one, and negative one to the power one fifth is one of the roots of negative one going to be negative one. Something to think about, right? So let me know what you think, and I'm going to show you the result that comes from Wolfram Alpha real quick. And so Wolfram Alpha also agrees with my finding because it gives us x equals 4n plus 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Well, actually, that's going to be in two hours. By the way, let me tell you, I have a very interesting trigonometric equation that's going to come up in two hours. And another trigonometric expression that you need to simplify in two hours from that. So two hours apart, you're going to have three videos today, a Sunday special. And that's going to be pretty much the same thing from now on. Take care until the next video. Bye-bye.